So our character has no clothes, so let's rectify that. Uh, from where we left off, we have a high-res body file over here that we're passing back and forth between Character Creator and ZBrush. What we're going to be doing now is going to be a game res pipeline where we're going to have a high-res ZBrush file that we're going to create a game res for. We're going to export our high-res, export our low-res, bake those differences, uh, and then bring in our low-res into Character Creator just by importing it. So there's not going to be any Character Creator go zing back and forth. Now you can, uh, but I wanted to cover this game res pipeline just to show you how it works. And if you want to see a little bit more on the creation of this high res stuff, I'm sure I mentioned this in the bumper. I'm going to give you a link to this file here, or this video I should say, where basically we do walk through, here's how we created the pants and the boots and the wrap ties and all the stuff we do in ZBrush to create those assets, as well as going in here and using curves for like substance painter stitches. And we'll talk a little bit about texturing in this video too. But like I said, this is the game res pipeline. There is, if you want to have that parity, and it's a good thing to have between Character Creator and ZBrush, where if I have a low res mesh, but I make changes in Character Creator, I want to send those back to ZBrush. That's more of a, for me, a 3D printer pipeline for my assets. So this is this uh, set right here, the ZBrush mesh and Real Illusion Character Creator workflow. If you go and watch this video, this will show you how to use Character Creator and GoZ and ZBrush to pass assets and accessories and clothing back and forth and maintain that parity between your files. So we'll cover both in this, uh, but we're going to start with the game res process. So, and speaking of the game res process, I have a couple different versions of different types of game res as you might create. We have kind of a cinematic game res over here in the shirt, and then we have more of a game game res here in the helmet. And this will make more sense as I get further into it. But to reiterate, this is not a game res creation course. Please don't look at this course as something that's like, this is how you make a game res. This is just how I do quick and dirty stuff for demos hopefully give you a few examples that you can kind of take away information from and apply it to your own workflows. So here we have our high res. And if I scroll up in my file here, so body high res, we've already talked about. This is where we are going back and forth between CC and character creator with GoZ. Here's our base body that we've poly painted and we have a high res that we bake to. We've already done that part in here. Now I have a file that has all of his high res clothing and accessory uh, options that we're going to be baking out to a game res. And if I turn on the body here, you're going to see I have a placeholder body file. This does not have to be an expensive placeholder body file. If I select him, you'll see he's only 214,000 points. In fact, I think he's subdivision level three. And in fact, he doesn't even need UVs. I can go down here to UV map, just hit delete UV. That'll save some file size so I don't have to, you know, have slow saves or taking up extra RAM if I don't need it. He's literally just there to build stuff off of. My real body file is over here in this file. You'll also notice uh, on this file here, I don't have a, a, a null mesh up here to name catch, which we went over in the naming. Uh, if you go in here to tool save as versus file save as in ZBrush, we use file save as for our body file to go back and forth from CC to ZBrush. In this version here i'm using the tool save as so i have my little name catcher file up here if i go into solo mode it's just a star sitting in the middle of my scene and that's going to catch my name and then here's just the body placeholder i'm going to turn both of these off i don't need to export them they're just there is is just a reference guide for me as i'm creating these clothing uh items so now here we have our high res objects here and again that creation will be in that youtube video now, what we do have is, you can see this is broken up by names. We have shirt 01, shirt 02, shirt 03, shirt 04, underscore high. All of these are going to be baked, what's called namespace baking in Substance Painter. So we're going to export all these objects with underscore high, and we'll have a corresponding low res file that we're going to set up that is going to bake high res to low res. So we don't get what would be like baking errors, where if I was to export, I'm going to hold down shift and turn off the eyeball for the shirt. So if I turn all these on and uh, we look at these, you know, if this is a separate object here, if I go into solo mode, like all of these are, this is like a cinematic game res workflow, I guess you could call it, or it's not really a game res, but 
all of these objects are separated. And I'm, again, I'm just using this as a demo example. In case you wanted to go this route, it's totally possible. If you want to go the very, very game res route where, and for instance, all of this would be baked to one mesh. I'll show you some examples in this file, but this is more of a cinematic setup. So in order to not get baking errors, like if I was to export, you know, all of these meshes all at once, and then I've got a separate little um, screw file in here, or I guess that's a rivet, or all these little coins that are in here. The backsides of these are going to be crossed over with the other meshes in here, and it's going to get little, uh, and this will make more sense when we're in Substance Painter, it's going to cast a ray out from the low res to the high res, and it's going to catch all of those other objects that are sitting in there. I don't want any of that. So what I have here, if I go into solo mode, is you'll see I split the shirt up, uh, and it's all going to have one material assigned to all the shirt assets. But for my high res here, I have all of them so that they're not touching. So I have shirt 01 is all of these objects with nothing touching. Shirt 02 is all of these objects with nothing touching. So when I go to bake shirt 02 high to shirt 02 low, I'm not going to get any normal errors or any ray projection errors or picking up other objects that I don't want around. It'll just have a nice, super clean bake for all these objects. So again, shirt 03, nothing's touching. And then shirt 04, um, nothing's touching. Minus these things, but that's, you know, again, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, pick and choose your battles, what's going to take time and effort. So long story short, we have uh, all of these high-res meshes that we're going to bake to a corresponding low-res mesh. Uh, I'm going to hold down shift and turn off this eyeball and then turn it back on to turn everything else back on. And again, we can turn off that body and that star. So we'll look at a simpler example. We'll go to the helmet here. So if I go into solo mode, here's another example of something you might do, which is create uh, a low res for all of these objects together. So instead of going through here and separating everything out to do like a cinematic pipeline where all of these are going to be separate objects, this eventually is going to be just one solid low res object that I'm going to bake all of these at once to uh, this high res object here. How I end up doing that, I'm gonna hold down shift and turn off the eyeball and turn this back on, is I'll set up this high res file with everything underscore high and then I'll make a low res version of this ZBrush file. And for objects like this, and again, I wouldn't say do this step, uh, and no, in fact, let me pull up another video. This is what I call super quick and dirty methodology. So if you see my ZBrush 2018 ZBrush Summit presentation, we talk a lot about how to get things in context into engine quickly. Basically, we're just, and it's called a grandma test. <laughs> Watch the video, I'll, I'll put the link in the description. You can uh, check that video out. But essentially, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time right now going through and hand retopologizing this to make it all nice if I'm not sure I'm gonna use it. So what I'll tend to do is just voxelize this in ZBrush, DynaMesh or Remesh by Union uh, Boolean and then export that out as my low res, auto UV it, bake it off in Painter, call it a day. And then once I'm convinced that that's what my final needs to be and I'm good to go, then I'll go back through and I'll do something like this. You can also link to this video too, where I go through, and this is just a bunch of examples of how to use Z-Remesher or uh, Topology Brush or uh, Z-Spheres Topology to go through and create by hand you know, all of the topology that you would need to create, uh, you know, go through here and plot all your edges and make sure you capture your silhouette and all the little details that you need to bake this to a nice hand created low res mesh. And of course, you don't have to use ZBrush for that. Uh, Max Maya Moto Blender Cinema 4D Topo Gun 3D Coat, whatever you want to use to drag polygons along a surface and then UV that and bake it out is totally fine. So having said that, here's how I would create, again, just for a quick demo example, uh, and just to get something representative in engine so I can test it and have a material on it and then decide, okay, I'm gonna spend a lot of time to hand do this game res. There's two ways I would go about it. So again, file, tool, save as, save this as, you know, demo, goblin demo gear underscore high Z tool is what I do. And then I would save another version of this, which is gonna be like, like my working low res version, uh, just for my ZBrush files where I do stuff like this, where instead of going through and again, separating, let's go out of transparency mode here, instead of going through and separating things out in like a cinematic workflow for this helmet, it, helmet it's just gonna be one game res file. So how I'm gonna do that in ZBrush, 
is I'm going to hold down shift and turn off this poly paint. So you can, we'll talk about those poly paint in just a second, the material IDs. But for this low res here, two ways I could do that. I'm going to go down here to geometry dynamesh. I'm going to turn down blur, uh, turn off project. Uh, my resolution, I'm going to play around with the slider. Essentially what I'm looking for is a single low res envelope that I can use as a basis for creating my quote unquote game res. So I'm just gonna, you know, I'll move this up, you know, the 992, I'm not really even sure what I wanna use. I'm just gonna hit Dynamesh and I'm gonna look at that result and let's switch this material out to green metallic. And we can see what it did was stick all of my objects together. So instead of having a bunch of objects that are all separate here. So if I go into my move brush and say, auto masking, turn on topological, you can see I can move these objects separately. As soon as I hit this Dynamesh button, and again, we'll turn that resolution up, it's going to combine all these objects into one mesh. If I go through here and hold down Shift and Smooth, you'll see these are all, you know, objects that are all put together. Now you can see right here, Dynamesh does do kind of, it's good at creating low res envelopes, don't get me wrong. And this is what you could call like uh, voxelization. In fact, if you go to my uh, playlist here, there is a Houdini game res workflow. So here's a Houdini auto game res. If you look at this one, this is how to set up your own game res creation pipeline where you can, you actually use a voxelization node and uh, you know, here's voxel mesh basics and stuff. So kind of the same workflow. This is just a little bit of a manual uh, touch in ZBrush here. Uh, and you'll get some of these same errors using voxelization in Houdini as well, where it wants to like reach across and kind of mush geometry together. And this can create some really nasty situations. Now, if you see them in here, what you can do is hold down shift, go into Sculptors Pro, and then just kind of smooth those areas out. Um, you could even store your original high res mesh. If I go back in my history here, hold down control and tap, that'll store those points in history. So as I'm making those changes, I can go back in here to BHR history recall brush, and I could, you know, go through and get the basically get these verts back up to the high res mesh. Because if I'm smoothing, I'm averaging those verts and it's pulling away from the high res mesh. I want to bring those back to the high res mesh. So BHR is a easy way to do that with history stored on your original high res mesh. So that's one way I would go through and just create a low res mesh. And in fact, the lower res mesh or the lower resolution on your Dynamesh, the more it'll go through and fill any weird holes and any of that stuff. Again, it might give you some nasty geometry in here. So go through here and look and make sure it's not doing anything terribly wrong. Uh, you can also clean this up in an external program. But now that we have this kind of Again, it's got all of the silhouette detail that I need to capture, and then all of my high res detail, I'm gonna bake that to a normal map. So if I'm ready to make a game res here, quote unquote, just a quick and dirty game res, uh, go in here to Z plugin. We're gonna say Dynamesh, or sorry, Decimation Master, hit pre-process current. That'll go through and say, okay, here's your envelope. We've pre-processed pre it. And now instead of 24, you know, thousand points, maybe we wanna drop this, we'll try 10 hit enter, hit decimate current, and here's a 10,000 point uh, game res that I can export as my uh, low res. And then I would just UV this. You could UV it in here if you want to. That would be under Z plugin, UV master. You could use this to UV your object. Uh, I'm gonna UV all this externally, but that's how I'd go through and do my envelope wrapping game res. Now there is another option. If I go back here to my original high res here, uh, this one's a little cleaner, so if I hit W uh, and bring up my gizmo here, you can go into the gear icon, and if all of these objects are merged into a uh, single subtool, you can go in here and you can simply say remesh by union. This is going to run a Boolean operation on these objects, so it's going to go through and do a very clean job. It's not going to be like Dynamesh where it creates a blanket and then, you know, it creates a voxelized effect with like little crumbly edges and stuff. This is literally turning this into one Boolean object. Everything is all stuck together now. So if I'm gonna hold down shift, turn off Sculptures Pro, go into my move brush. And if I go in here again, we have my brush settings over here and I have topological turned on. If I go through here and try to move this apart, all of these are now stuck together. You'll also see I got some nasty little floating points in here. Those aren't great. So to get rid of those, what I would do now that I've run my Boolean operation, hold down control shift, 
grab a little piece of your object, do control shift A, which is visibility grow all. If you control shift drag to invert that visibility, now you'll see all of these kind of left behind remnants of back faces and just little weird pieces that are floating. Uh, now it also, basically what control shift A does is grab all the contiguous meshes on that object. You'll see I have earrings sitting out here. These aren't bad, I wanna keep those around. So I'm gonna hold down control shift alt and add those to my visibility selection. And now if I control shift drag, I've basically inverted the visibility. So all of those nasty floating pieces out here are invisible. And that means I can go down here to geometry, modify topology and just hit delete hidden. So now I've got a Boolean version. Uh, granted, there's a lot of inside faces. It's not, you know, capturing, it's, it's basically capturing my silhouette perfectly as opposed to Dynamesh, which is kind of capturing a, a representation that's kind of dumbed down or less um, detailed than this. However, you can decimate this down now. So if I go down here to, again, Z plugin decimation master preprocess current, and we'll give this a second because instead of pre-processing our Dynamesh, which was fairly low res and it goes really fast, this is pre-processing, you know, almost 2 million polygons. So we got to give it a little bit of time to go through here and write this to memory so we can decimate down. So we'll speed that up. It didn't take too long, maybe 46 seconds. That's not terrible. But uh, we're going to go over here and we've pre-processed. And I should mention, since we've pre-processed once, we can go in here and I say, okay, let's try 50,000 polygons. Type in 50, hit enter. And let's try that again, 50 hit enter, hit decimate current, and it'll decimate it down to a 50K point uh, game res. And you don't even have to pre-process if you wanna change that. If you wanna go in here and say, hey, you know what? Let's try 10, type in 10, hit decimate, and here's our 10K poly version. So dial in whatever, you know, how many polys you want this to be. And that brings up a <laughs> good point. When you're doing your game res, as of this recording, uh, I think it's 300,000 poly uh, quads or 600,000 tries is the maximum that you can have on a character in character create and have it be performant and actually move around. That's the kind of a, a hard cap, uh, which is plenty. It's, I don't think we need to approach that. In this instance, in this demo, I get close to it just because I'm not worried about performance or anything. I'm just trying to come up with different scenarios to talk to you about uh, and have work in Character Creator. So I'm not trying to super optimize what I'm doing, obviously. But anyway, this is how I would go in here. And again, just, you know, what you're looking for, if I type in 25 and hit decimate current, you want to capture all of the silhouette details that you need, but you don't need any super, you don't need a ton of detail in here you can go through and any anything that you're gonna have details on, you could go and bake out in the normal map. So again, you pick and choose how low poly you wanna go. And in fact, remember, you can go in and hand make, you know, go through here and handcraft a beautiful low res that you're gonna UV later, totally doable. But for our purposes, that's how I went through and created either the cinematic low res for some of these objects. And some of them are pretty clean. If I go down here and I go into solo mode, you can see this is a fairly simple object. When I do the low res for this, it'll actually be, if I hit reconstruct, it'll actually be this mesh right here because I started pretty clean. So it'll be totally fine as just having a low res that I go through in UV. Or I can merge everything together and decimate it down, or I can split things apart and you know use their lowest subdivision or recreate the low subdivision. Again, it depends on how you want to work. Now back to my material IDs that I mentioned earlier. Uh, let's switch our material out to a skin shader four. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna turn on this little paintbrush icon, which is turning on your uh, poly paint. So if I go down here to poly paint menu, and you can see it's basically that paintbrush is turning on colorize. So essentially what we've done is fill in our object with a bunch of color. And in fact, for the helmet, this is my low res proxy. I'm gonna go back here to this history undo because this is the original state for this and we'll turn on colorize. So again, we'll turn off the body and we'll turn off the star because we're not talking about those. So for our gear, you're gonna see I have a whole bunch of colors assigned to this object. You can't go into uh, again, we have Z plugin open over here on the left. There is a Z color plugin you can use. So hit Z color. I'll move this on the screen so you can see it. You can go through and you can see there's mathematically separated color values in here, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, I like to use, and I'll put a description, a link to this tool 
in the description of this video. If I go in here to my tool, I have a simple color swatches Z tool in here. So if I double click this, I can load this up and then drag it out on my canvas. Uh, make sure I'm in edit mode, hit F to frame, and then we'll rotate this around. There you go. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this plane to texture my object. So I don't want it in the way of my screen while I'm working. So I'm gonna put it over here outside of my safe action here. As long as I can see the colors here, that's totally fine. And the cool thing about ZBrush is you can drop things to your canvas. One way to do that is you can just go out of edit mode and say switch. That will automatically drop our currently selected subtool to the canvas. And I'm not gonna go over here to my working high res files, drag those out on my canvas, go into edit mode. And now I have my color swatches sitting over here. And you know, if I'm just starting over, I'm gonna hold down shift and turn off colorize. And then I've got my high res objects ready to be filled with color. Now, why am I filling them with just random colors? Essentially what I'm gonna use these for is masks in Substance Designer. So when we go in and texture this stuff, uh, I can assign red to all of my leather objects, let's say, and I can assign hot pink to all of my uh, rivets if I want to. And I can even contain or maintain that consistency between objects too. So if I if I decide, if I turn hold down shift and turn on my polypane again, if I decide light blue is gonna be used as a rivet, you know, if I keep it consistent, then it's number one, it's easier for me just to remember while I'm in there to be like, hey, I can go and pick that color and painter. Uh, another thing too, is if you wanted to, you know, have a smart material save that has like leather and metal and rope, in this instance, I can just drag a smart material for the helmet and drag it onto the shirt. And a lot of these would line up, you know, the, the yellow straps would be the same. The rivets would be the same material. The rope would be the same color. So if I use a smart material system, it would be smart enough to know that all these color material ID assignments are the same between different objects. You don't have to do that, but that's just something that I did. So again, for this helmet, essentially, uh, again, this is just all of the high res objects for the helmet combined into one subtool. We're gonna use this as our helmet underscore high everything is named something underscore high. So we can again, bake by namespaces later on when we have our final game res. So for this helmet underscore high, uh, if I hold down control shift and tap, you'll see here's the ax head. I can control shift drag. I can basically go through and it's all separate objects. So if I want to fill in all of these, you know, red rope objects here with the same material ID. So I can assign, I can drag and drop one material, a rope material in substance designer, let's say, onto my object and then I can say, hey, Substance Painter, only assign it to these areas of the mesh easily, quickly. I don't have to go in here and paint every single one of these stitches, obviously. So control shift tap this rope, control shift tap these little stitches in here, control shift drag to invert that visibility. I'm gonna go through here. If I tap C on my keyboard, you'll see it's updating the color here. So I can very quickly go through here and just grab a different color. Now, why these colors? If I go into my color menu and drag that over here to the left, look at these values as they change. Red up here is a value of R255. So red is 255, green is zero, blue is zero. If I do this one, it's 255, zero, 255. If I do this one, it's zero, zero, 255, et cetera. These are all very separated out so that when the robot eyeballs uh, in Substance Painter go and try to make a mask from these values, it's looking at these values too, because it's a robot brain. It's not using visual uh, interpretations of your colors. It's going through there and saying, hey, this color is very different from another color. So if, for instance, you may see two colors that are very similar, like this light blue here is 0, 255, 255. Here's another very similar light blue, but if I hold down or I tap C over this one, it's 128, 255, 255. So again, it's a pretty separated value in the R channel. So even though to our eyes, it looks pretty close, a robot eye will look at this and go, hey, this R is way over here in 128. These are definitely different colors and then give you a mask, a nice clean mask. Now, if I was to go through here and choose like, you know, this color blue and this color blue and this color blue and this color blue and this color blue, these are very close in these numbers. So they're gonna be a lot harder for the robot eye to separate these into their own clean mask. So this is why we do mathematically separated color values for our material ID or Q uh, numbers, I should say. 
So anyway, go through here and I, you know, if I hold down control shift and bring everything back, this is all solid blue. All of these objects are going to be the same material are red. If you're not sure, I have a whole bunch of colors to choose from. So it's not like I'm, I'm limited in my color palette here with all these colors. So if I'm not sure that it's going to be reusable on another object, or if I really want all these to be a different color, maybe I want this rope to be a different material and I'm not sure, just go through here and choose. I'm just going to hold down um, or just tap C over this object here and then control alt F. I have a hotkey assigned to fill object here. So color menu, fill object, and we can just fill this with gray. That gray is not being used on any other object here. So if I'm not sure, I'll just assign a color that's not being used, bake it off. And then if I decide, you know what, actually this one and this one will be the same material. No problem. It's really easy to do in substance designer. So anyway, go through, create your high res objects. Uh, and also depending on what you want to make, you may not want to do it in your high res. Now, if you're going to be 3D printing something, then you probably do need to put it in your high res, like all of your leather um, material reads on your object. Like if I wanted to put it like, like alpha stamp cracked leather on this high res or go through here and do really fine stitching on an IMM brush around here. If you want to 3D print that, you probably should put it in the high res. Um, if you're just using this as a game res pipeline, I would say anything that doesn't break your silhouette, feel free to just create that stuff in your uh, game res in Substance Painter in the texture. Uh, it's less destructive, it's easier to manipulate, it's easier to kind of shift things around, it's easier to get clean masks for. So for instance, I have some stitching that I'm going to put later on right around here that I'm not going to do in ZBrush. I'm going to do it later in Substance Painter, you know, so kind of pick and choose what you do in ZBrush. And also you'll see there's no leather detail on this surface because I'm going to put that uh, or scratches. Uh, I guess there's a, there's kind of some scratches on here. Uh, but again, I'm going to put a lot more scratches and a lot more wear and tear and leather uh, material surface treatment to this to really sell the object. So I'm not going to rely on just my ZBrush sculpt to provide that information. So we have all of our high res objects in here, underscore high, and we're going to export these out and then create our, you know, set up our game res basically. And we're going to bake those together in Substance Painter. So again, with all of these showing, and again, I don't need the body I don't need this star. These are just a name catcher and a placeholder. So with all of these objects showing, my underscore high objects showing, I'm going to go to tool, export, and we're going to export this in the gear bake folder as an FBX file. FBX files will maintain your naming. Uh, it will export your poly paint as a vertex color, which we're going to bake off as a material ID. Again, this will all make more sense when we're in Substance Painter. So I'm again, gear bake high underscore. I'm going to do double click this and override it. I've already written this out, so I'm not going to sit here and wait for it to export. Um, but go ahead and say export this as, for example, gear bake underscore high. That's not going to name anything in here, gear bake underscore anything. This is just a, an FBX file is an envelope file that contains all of your objects within it. So don't worry about it renaming anything. Your name of your FBX is just for you to look at and understand. Um, and then we're going to make a low res, which I'm going to talk about. So go ahead and hit export as an FBX. And actually, let me go ahead and go through that process really quick, just so you can see the settings that I use. So if I say, okay, overwrite this. Yes, I can't move this window, but I can put it here. Uh, basically visible binary is fine. Whatever FBX version you want to use, they all seem to work. One thing that's really important here, do smooth your normals on your high res. Number one, it's going to reduce your file size considerably because all of your vertex normals are going to be average. They're going to have one value as opposed to multiple for a you know, hard surface vertex normals. And that's about it. So again, only visible, not selected, not all, and then smooth your normals, hit OK, and that'll go ahead and write out your high res. Now, in this case, we're exporting 18 million points, so give it a bit. It might take a while, you know, a couple minutes to export all that to a file. So let's talk about that game res. I'm going to go in here to File, Open. I have a working file of my game res here, and just like we talked about, for every single high res object we have in ZBrush, we have a corresponding low res. And when I go into Substance Painter, I'm going to tell it, bake shirt01 low to shirt01 high. 
I'm gonna bring in, while we're talking about my cameras, I'm gonna scoot this guy over and we're going to pull over the UV map and we're gonna pull over our hyper shade. Uh, if you wanna to get to these, it's Windows Modeling Editors is UV Editor. And then up here in your interface here, uh, if you hit this button, that'll open up your hyper shade. So two really important things we need to talk about. In our previous video, we used the UDIM workflow for the body. It had head and chest and arms, and it was basically one solid object, but it was UV'd in such a way that it, you know, had you know one, two, three, four, five, and six, uh, you know, quadrants that it was taking up. What we're going to be doing in this workflow is not a UDIM workflow, but this is going to be a basic zero to one material assignment workflow that creates our texture sets. So what that means is, remember, shirt 01 low is going to bake to shirt 01 high etc etc however you're going to see like shirt 04 doesn't take up all the uv space neither does three two and one however all of these low reses put together take up the entire when i say zero to one i mean here's the zero zero in uv space and then here's the one one in the main uv quadrant so that's the zero to one quadrant basically now how i put all of these together in Substance Painter or allow it Substance Painter to know, hey, all of these objects I want to paint as one texture set is simply assign a material to it. So I can select all of these objects here. I can right click and say, you know, assign new material and then choose, you know, I choose a blend, doesn't really matter. Uh, and then that'll create a new material assigned to all these objects. Or you can go in here and say, you know, create, create a new blend material, uh, control, double click it in order to rename it or you know right click and choose rename i suppose and then select all of your shirt objects right click the shirt material and say assign materials to selection so now if i right click the shirt and say select objects with material actually let's deselect everything so you can see this right click shirt select objects with material all of the shirt objects are assigned the shirt material and all of those objects are uv zero to one so even though i'm baking them separately by their namespace in Substance Painter, they're all gonna be part of one texture set that I'm going to be texturing basically. And I'm gonna step through, you know, here's the helmet. The helmet doesn't have multiple objects. It's just one single solid object. And you can see in here, <laughs> this will be our dirty little secret. We decimated this game res, we auto UV'd it, we exported it, it's totally gross. I wouldn't say put these UVs in your portfolio and expect a good job. Again, this is just uh, something representative I can throw into engine really quickly, evaluate it, and then when I wanna do my real game res, then I'll go through and hand do my game res. Until that point, I'm not gonna bother putting in that time. We're just kinda, again, this is just quick and dirty workflow. Uh, but again, be as clean as you want. You know, here's the loincloth. Those are super clean, right? Uh, and this is getting baked to its own uh, object here. Here's the axe, etc. So you can see all the glove stuff here, all the boots stuff here. And again, the boots are fairly clean. It is pretty quick job, you know, going through and just cutting UVs and laying them out. But again, this isn't really a game res or a high risk creation video. I just want to make sure I bridge that gap between here's surprise. We're dragging assets or accessories into character creator. I want to give you at least a little info on what's going on in order to get to that point. So anyway, all of these boots, for example, like we just talked about, have the boots material assigned. So here's another thing. If you're bringing in low res objects or like a decimated version of your ZBrush mesh for your game res, make sure I usually select all my objects, go in here to, and again, this, this same deal in Max Miyamoto Blender Cinema 4D Houdini, uh, going into, mesh display i like to do an unlock normals because sometimes your normals can come in locked if they're if they're ever like look black and splotchy in areas that's probably you have locked normals so go ahead and unlock your normals and then i'll do a set to face and then i'll do a soften uh soften edge basically i soften all of my verts now granted uh it might behoove you if you're doing real game res to go through here and you know harden your edges along your UV borders. If you're doing hard surface modeling uh, and you want to bake and use your hard, your hard edges, I'm not going to get into the cost of having open border edges and how you can use that to your advantage for creating hard and soft edges because you're already paying the cost. I'm not going to get into that, but I just basically gave you the overview <laughs> of why those are useful. Um, another, you know what? I'll bring this up too. 
uh, Dennis Porter, uh, one of my good friends, Dennis Porter, at least I hope he considers me a good friend. Uh, he has an awesome plugin that'll go through and do smoothing rooms for Maya based on your open border edges and or the curvature of your mesh to kind of uh, give you the best of both worlds as opposed to, you know, cost and uh, vertex normals. So anyway, in our case, I just went through and unlocked all my normals, set them to face, soften them all. If you're in Maya, for example, and you're and you have a mesh that looks like that looks like this, where it's like pure black, uh, probably you do need to go in here to mesh display and say uh, you could say set the face, but again, all those normals are reversed. So I need to go in here to mesh display and hit reverse. And now my normals are facing the right way. But you'll also see they're faceted now. So again, mesh display, uh, unlock normals, set the face, uh, reverse if I need to, and then soften edge. You'll see I have all those in, as buttons in here so I can very quickly just hit this one, this one, this one, and I'm good to go. So that's essentially how I set up this game res. Uh, as it were. And again, all here's all my material assignments. It'll show up as texture sets in Substance Painter. Here's all of my UVs. Everything's UV zero to one based on their texture set. So I can select all of these here, go in here to file, export selection. We're going to drop these again, right on my desktop under gear bake. Overall, I'll overwrite this gear bake low, say yes. So we've exported all of these as a single FBX file. However, it will retain our name spaces basically for our objects. Ooh, there is one thing I want to talk about and let's go ahead and I don't need to see UVs or material assignments anymore. So basically going through here, you're going to see my cloth objects here. We have cloth for the head and for the body here, they are all one-sided meshes. We can just render them double-sided. We don't need to have it like with a mesh thickness for my cloth. As well as if I go in here to, you know, say the belt object. So here's, these, these are all part of the pants. So if we go in here and select all the pants and okay, I'll hit control one, just so we can isolate this. You're going to see, I don't have any caps here. If you, you can cap this off as a low res, and then you'll just have to make sure that the middle center point is weighted to, you know, probably the spine or something. Uh, and also the bottom of the feet, but you're going to see, instead of capping those, I just bring in Let's turn off show grid. I just bring in the edges uh, a little bit. So my high res is here and it kind of folds in and the, the high res may be capped. The high res may have be double sided and a ton of polygons, but for my low res pants, I just bring in the edge here so that it interpenetrates with the body and that's it. So all of this gets weighted to the leg. All of this gets weighted to the spine and then there's no double sided. There's no caps on here. So that's essentially how I treat my low res mesh. The next video is going to cover the process for taking our game res into Painter, baking our high res data to it, texturing our asset, and then finally exporting those textures, of course, to be used in Character Creator.